Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you for joining today. I want to seek the blessings of Radha Mother, Radha Shamsam, the Krishna Balaram, Bal Gopal, Gauri Tashira Prabhupada, and Guru Maharaj, and the Assembled Vaishnav, so that we can continue with uh, part two of uh, Devatas. So, yesterday uh, we looked at what are the differences between God and the Devatas, the demigods, how, what the position is of God and the position of devatas they're basically assistants devotees of god very powerful devotees important devotees and then we looked at um, the position of the devatas the constitutional position how what where they're situated how they are jivatmas and um, is the position of devatas is a position, is a formal position. Like that in the government, we have positions. And then are they under the influence? What mode are they in? When principally mode of goodness. And then we also looked at um, how they form part of the body of the Lord, the universal form of the Lord. And then today... We wanted to look at um, their knowledge. What is their knowledge like? And uh, perhaps we'll look at some of the devatas today. People worship demigods to gain material gains because they believe that the demigods control the fate of all living beings. However, there are many instances that the demigods were not only bewildered, but also uh, not aware of who Krishna was. Sometimes this is because Krishna puts them under that maya to perform a certain leela. So it may not be necessarily the fault of the demigods. But in many cases, the case is that they do not necessarily understand the position of Krishna. Even they don't understand the position of devotees. For example, we had um, the uh, Nalkuvera and Manigriva the sons of Kuvera, who um, were fr frolicking around in the, in the lake, and then Narad Muni turned up. And they didn't really appreciate the, the uh, position Narad Muni has as one of the great devotees of the Lord. So what to speak of not understanding the, the devotees? How is it possible for them to understand the Lord? Anyway. We learn from the Bhagavatam that Brahma, the creator of all living beings, including human beings, was bewildered about who was Krishna and wanted to test Krishna and show his power by stealing all the cow, cowboy, cowherd boys and also the calves. So, um, so this is from the 10th Canto 13th chapter 15th verse. Oh Maharaj Parikshit, Brahma, who resides in the higher planetary system in the sky, has had the activities of the most important, most powerful Krishna in killing and delivering Agasur. And he was astonished. Now that same Brahma wanted to show some of his own power and see the power of Krishna who was engaged in his pastime, uh, his childhood pastimes, playing as if with ordinary cowherd boys. Therefore, in Krishna's absence, Brahma took all the boys and calves to one another place. Thus he became entangled, for in the very near future, he would see how powerful Krishna was. So sometimes uh, Brahma may feel the urge to test the power of Krishna because he sees him as a cowherd boy playing with Madhu Mangal. You know, stealing his gulab jamun or, um, you know, playing some games. And it's a little bewildering, wondering, whoa, hang on a minute. Is this the Lord who's supposed to kill cumps? <laughs> He's fooling around with the coward boys. Now, whether Brahma is in um, yoga maya or Mahamaya, um, for us, it's difficult to say, but we do know he is, at least our Brahma is a pure devotee. So um, I suspect that this is the testing of Krishna 
of uh, or the um, uh, learning of a lesson for us that even Brahma can be can be bewildered. So then we look at the King of Heaven also did not know that Krishna was the supreme personality of Godhead. He wanted to test Krishna, as we learn from the following verses of the Bhagavata, Bhagavatam. The King of Heaven Indra also did not know that Krishna was supreme. And uh, 1025 2, angry Indra sent forth the clouds of universal destruction known as uh, Samvartaka. Samvartaka. Imagining himself the supreme controller, he spoke as follows. So, next verse Indra said, Just see how these coward men living in the forest have become so greatly intoxicated by their prosperity they have surrendered to an ordinary human being krishna thus they have offended the gods <laughs> so this is indra's uh, thinking uh, a little bit uh, off the mark in the bhagavad gita krishna declares he is the governing principle of the demigods so he says in 730 those in full consciousness of me who know me the supreme lord to be the governing principle of the material manifestation of the demigods and of all methods of sacrifice can understand and know me, supreme personality of Godhead, even at the time of death. So why do demigods not recognize Krishna? Demigods could not recognize Krishna because Krishna wanted to not to be recognized in that moment. Krishna leelas are arranged by Krishna himself. Everybody participates as he desires to enhance the leela. Anything that happens with demigods or Krishna have ultimate good, ultimate goal for welfare of the universe. Therefore, best not to judge them. Avoid judging them, as this may be offensive towards the demigods, especially for Lord Brahma and Lord Indra, judging some of their acts on material human level. The demigods are devotees of the Lord and actually making offenses to Vaishnavas will degrade our progress in spiritual life. So this is an uh, important point to understand that um, sometimes these are just wonderful leelas that Krishna is, is uh, enacting for our benefit and the demigods are his um, servants, they are his, the tool by which he is performing the leela. So he may, um, you know, he may use the, the position, his position and the position of the dev demigods to demonstrate the position of the Supreme Lord. So this is why sometimes the demigods may not recognize Krishna and best not to worry too much about whether the demigods are in ignorance or are, um, just been put in ignorance. It doesn't matter. Uh, either way, it's something that Krishna wants us to learn. And that's the mood that we should take it in. So let's have a look at uh, the, the principal de uh, deities within Sanatana Dharma. These are very common. These are taught in the school curriculum as well um, in the UK. Brahma, creator. And Vishnu, sustainer, Shiva, destroyer, Shakti. So that is the Dharampatni of Shiva, uh, Parvati or Durga, Devi also is known as Mother Nature, the goddess. Hanuman is also regarded as one of the 12 principal deities. Lakshmi, uh, the goddess of fortune the wealth and fortune, consort of Vishnu, Saraswati. And tomorrow is very important day. It's Vasant Panchmi. It's a celebration and uh, we take the blessings of Saraswati to assist us in learning more and more about, about God. She's very kind-hearted. She's the goddess of learning and the arts. She's the consort of Brahma. Ganesh, um, also known as uh, Ganpati, the removal of obstacles, the son of Lord Shiva. Very auspicious personality because he gives auspiciousness and um, 
devotees pray to him to remove obstacles, especially on the spiritual path. Skanda or Murgan or Kartikeya is known as commander in chief of the Devas, demigods, and he's also a son of Shiva. Surya Dev, the sun god, one of the administrative gods. He is one of the five deities worshipped by the Smarta Brahmins. The Smarta Brahmins basically are the ones who look at the Vedas and look at the rituals and consider the rituals of the Vedas to be all in all. They believe that the rituals of the Vedas will take them back to the spiritual world. And the rituals of the Vedas principally focus on five deities, which are Vishnu, Shiva, Devi, Ganesh, and Surya. Surya Dev is also sometimes considered a form of Vishnu, Surya Narayan. So often, uh, sun is regarded as an expansion of Narayan. And Ram Krishna, Rama and Krishna. Note, Radha and Sita are not included in the list of 12 principal deities since they are rarely, if ever, worshipped separately from their respective consorts. So that's quite interesting because Shakti often is worshipped without Shiva. And so is Lakshmi, is often worshipped without Vishnu. So you independently worshipped. But Radha Krishna, you never see a deity of Radha alone or a, C a deity of Sita alone. It's Radha Krishna, Sita Ram. Very interesting. And actually that is the right combination. When we worship Lakshmi, when the devotees worship Lakshmi, they want money from Lakshmi. That's why they're worshipping Lakshmi. But then Lakshmi is also known as Chanchala. She's very... Uh, flickering she will only stay where Narayan is so if one is worshipping Narayan or Vishnu then Lakshmi will automatically be present because she is always massaging the lotus feet of Narayan so this is uh, one aspect of Sanatan Dharma which sometimes is not explained within our Hindu temples that, uh, yes, it's okay to worship Lakshmi, but don't forget Narayan, because <laughs> she's always with Narayan. So better to worship Lakshmi Narayan. That way, um, you get whatever you want fulfilled. Hey, this is um, just uh, this is actually from one of the school books. <laughs> um, this Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, known as the Trimurti, three principal deities. But only one of them actually is considered supreme. And that's Vishnu. Brahma is just like us, the Jiva Sot, Jivatma. And Shiva is when Vishnu wants to touch this world, he transforms into Shiva. So he's got a, a category of his own. So he's not quite Vishnu. And then, of course, we talked about Shakti, Krishna Balla, or Krishna Ram, and then Hanuman, Lakshmi Devi, Saraswati, Ganapati, Skanda, Surya. So, yeah, we've been through these. And then there's a series of minor deities, and we don't, know, of course, offend anybody, but these are like the functional devatas they assist in the running of the universe in addition to the 12 main deities listed previously there are also a number of minor deities keeping in mind they may consider themselves more exalted or even supreme they are generally considered to have specific roles within the universe the main ones are also considered to have charge over eight directions beginning with the east and moving clockwise indra is in charge of the east Agni, southeast, Yam, the south, etc. That's why we tend not to have the deities facing the south, because they'll be facing Yamraj. <laughs> and uh, of course, for the deities, it doesn't matter, but it's not the most auspicious uh, way to face. 
So who are these minor devatas? Indra, king of heaven. Of course, uh, he, he may have a different conception. Now we have to remember Indra is a post which is occupied by um, qualified souls. So um, Agni in charge of fire, very, very important. Because Agni can also represent um, Vishnu, especially when we're doing the Yagyas. Agni comes, but actually it's not Agni, it's actually Vishnu coming in the form of Agni to eat, to accept the offerings by the Brahmins. Yamraj, who presides over death, again, very important personality, Surya. So Surya, we've classified him in both as one of the 12 principal and also one of the minor deities. So Surya Narayan, uh, when he comes as incarnation of Narayan, very, very important. Otherwise, Surya is here. Varun is a presiding deity of water. Again, very important, very strong. And we heard how when we're looking at the Bhagavatam, Hiranyaksh, when he came to this world and he wanted to fight, he went to Varun first, thinking Varun will give him a good fight. <laughs> and Varun said, I'm too old. You go and find Narayan, fight with him. <laughs> Vayu, uh, the presiding deity of wind, extremely strong. Pavan Putra Hanuman, so one of his incarnations is, or one of his, so his father is Vayu. He's regarded the incarnation of combined Shiva and, uh, and um, Vayu. Kuver, treasurer of the demigods, another important personality. Soma, uh, Chandradev, um, presiding deity of the moon. He has a lot of functions actually. For example, he gives juice to the fruits and the vegetables. So without the fruit, the juice in the vegetables and the fruits, we wouldn't be able to sustain our existence. He gives us that uh, nourishment. Stal Devata specifically referred to a minor deity who has jurisdiction over a particular place, a river, a forest or village. They're often worshipped in village shrines, a popular deity is Sitala, the goddess of smallpox, who is worshipped in the hope of avoiding the disease. So often, often there, this will be the case. Um, in villages, there will be specific deities one worships in order to avoid certain challenging situations. Other higher beings, there are also many other lesser deities and higher beings. We know there's 33 karor, demigods, 330 million demigods. So we've only gone through handful, two handfuls. So these other lesser deities and higher beings who often appear is the Asuras <laughs> who always, see Asuras, although they looked upon as demons, they're brothers or sisters of the Devatas. So, um, cousin brothers, cousin brothers, because Aditi was the, um, mother of the demigods, hence they're known as Adityas. And Diti, the sister of Aditi, Diti is the mother of the demons. So they're actually um, cousins. So the Usuras are regarded as quite powerful, quite powerful beings. The Devas, uh, Demigods, gods, apsaras, celestial nymphs, who generally entertain the devatas, higher beings, the nagas also, the celestial serpents considered to be superior personalities, the Gandharvas who sing um, heavenly songs for the pleasure of the de de uh, de demigods. Rakshashas, a race of man-eaters, <laughs> they also come into this category. Prajapatis, the progenitors of mankind. Prajapatis are uh, very mature um, 
personalities who populated the world. Uh, modern deities, some deities have risen to prominence more recently. Santoshima, the goddess of contentment, worshipped mainly by ladies. Ayap, Ayapam, popular in Kerala. He's a son of Shiva and Mohini, the female incarnation of Vishnu. So this gives an idea of, I suppose, the whole brief idea of the whole ambit of uh, what there is beyond earth, beyond earth, and in looking at the sort of the higher planetary systems and even the lower planetary systems, because the Asuras don't live in the heavens, they live in the lower regions, but these lower regions are as opulent as the heavens, but there's no conception of God, there's just enjoyment. So, uh, okay, we got a bit of time. <clears throat> Are there any questions up to now, actually? Okay, so we can make a. Uh, yes. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Mataji, Mataji, and all the devotees. The last one, I I remember you you told me, but I am could still mix up uh, when you said prajapatis, uh, pro, progenitors of mankind. And did you say uh, they were they are us, or did you say they were uh, spirituals? They're like uh, a Jivatma, like us, but very powerful. Jeeva, okay. Jeeva. Very powerful. Yeah. They, they are powerful. Okay. Very powerful. Like Kardamuni or Daksha. These are the Pujas. Okay. Very. Yeah, Daksha was Rajapati. I Daksha. remember that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. This, this uh, is this we're doing second time or third time? Second time, yeah. <laughs> because I remember we did last year, didn't we? Last year we did it, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So it's freshening up the yeah, mind. Bit of revision. <laughs> revision, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Oh, Hare Krishna, uh, Karuna. Uh, Prabhu, I, I've come to uh, a friend of mine. She hmm. She's talking about Praying Linga Bhairav. Have you come across that? Linga? Linga Bhairav. No. But it's a, maybe it's Linga Bhairavi or, or something. Uh, mm -hmm. She told me that this is a, 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 a goddess. And in fact, they are doing some type of meditation and then they, they can see the aura of people around them. So have you come across that? No. But there will be many other, um, you know, devatas who we we not aware because there's 330 million of them. Oh, uh, Jethi may know. Interesting. Bhairav is um, a form of Shiva, <laughs> and that the link. Yeah. So it's it's to do, I think, with with Parvati. I think. Okay. I, I think that's. Yeah, but the way she is explaining it. She's... Sorry. Yeah, but she doesn't mention Parvati Mata, but it's only a, a, a goddess that they are praying and, and developing this sense of... Yeah, of, I think uh, that goddess is supposed to, be... to, to... Yeah, they are, they are able to, to, to look at the aura of people. I don't know why, wow. how is it? I yeah, think that's it's... just a concoction. <laughs> I think oh, the goddess is supposed to be Parvati. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, that's what know. I've come across anyway. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I still find this strange. <laughs> I also know that Bhairav is the Shiva. Now, Ling Bhairav or Ling Bhairav is a, is a goddess I heard that for the first time. Mm. And it's a worldwide uh, renowned uh, uh, guru that, who is uh, teaching them, leading them to that. Right, right. No. Yeah. 
And there will be many unknown, uh, uh, you know, devatas who we don't really. And there may be something on the mystic powers, isn't it? Yeah, may well be that as well. Those who possess mystic powers. Yeah. Very good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can't always. Um, I mean, there's there are many other subdivisions within Sanatan Dharma, you know. Uh, and you can really get yeah. lost in all of them <laughs> very easily. <laughs> so, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. so I think we're very fortunate. When, when I, when I, yeah, when I hear her talking hmm. about all these, and hmm. I, I just um, come to realize how fortunate we are. Shri yeah. Rupa has given us uh, yeah. all these books now translated in English. It's, <clears throat> it's wonderful when I hear her. Talking about this, I, I, well, I try to connect it with mystic powers, so, and not devotional paths. So really, uh, I was wondering where, where should we go with all these meditation or whatever? Uh, yeah. Really wonderful, Shri <laughs> Jai. Very good point. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> very good point. Yeah, we are very fortunate. We we can be really focused and not worry not be side um, you know tracked very easily yeah for the time being i'm only listening to whatever she's doing then maybe one day i'm when i i i understand better what she's doing then i'm i'll try to mm. I, i'll try to convince convince her that this is mystic powers maybe that you are developing mm. you're you're going to get entangled in this repeated birth and death and you're going to come back to this material planet so it's not that's really the path that one should take. Mm. Yeah, because these mystic powers, eventually, even the Western science catches up. You know, for example, walking on water. Well, yeah. there's boats now. <laughs> you know, um, lighter than the lightest? Well, there's aeroplanes. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, eventually they catch up. So they're only material things. Why bother with them? Um yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, they may not be willing to listen because, you know, sometimes they, you know, if you've been practicing it such a long time, it's it's it almost becomes second nature, and then you think, no, I'm not going to get disturbed. I'm just going to continue. So, mm -hmm. but it's good to try to help, um, just yeah. giving information really, and then it's up to yeah. them to decide what they want to do. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay, if there's nothing else, we can actually stop now. We continue. Actually, not tomorrow. Let me just stop this. Uh Sanatan Dharma Ki Jai.